Now we turn to the announcement section, and it was quite a week this week. Earlier in the week, Google announced uh, the launch of Android 13 Developer Preview 1, which you can flash to eligible Pixel devices. I think that's the Pixel 4 and up. Uh, Warren, we've both installed it. I only did it today, but uh, you did it a bit earlier, I think. What are are your impressions? And you put it on your main phone, didn't you? I put it on my main phone the very hour it dropped. And... um, it was quite a thing because here I was, I got to the setup screen and, you know, tapped on the get started, whatever. And then I decided to, you know, tap on the Wi-Fi. And I have some special symbols like, you know, the star or the ad sign or some numbers and stuff like that in my Wi-Fi password. Then I went to hit the shift button and it was a no-go. Then I tried the symbols key. I held down the symbols key. I double tapped the symbol key and held it. Nothing happened. And I thought maybe there was some mistake somewhere. I restarted the phone. The same thing happened. And so, you know what? Finally, all I did was simply set it offline, paired my Bluetooth keyboard to it, signed into my Wi-Fi, then sign into my Google account, all using my Bluetooth keyboard. Once that was done and I started, you know, downloading my stuff, everything now works fine. I had a variant of that. Uh, My shift key and symbols key wouldn't work properly, but they did work when I double tap and double tapped and held them. The weird thing then though, was that half the letters wouldn't work. So, Four out of the five vowels would, and probably about six consonants. But the other ones, I had to double tap and hold, which was entertaining because if I held them too long, the alternative characters would come up, like under the N or under the A. So you had to get that double tap and hold precisely right. There was then a very odd situation, though, that because half the numbers wouldn't work properly, I couldn't put my pin in. So I I ended up factory resetting. Uh, Going, going to still Android 13, obviously, not creating a pin. And then I noticed happily there was an update for Gboard, which then made my characters work properly. And I was able to set a pin and all was well. But it was my first experience of uh, unlocking the bootloader and flashing something onto my phone as well, which is, which is quite interesting. Uh, a couple of false starts, but nothing bricked happily. Have you noticed much else about Android 13 thus far, Warren? Any any major things you've come across? So in reality, this is just the developer preview. And usually there's not much really going on, except that, you know, this is intended for developers so they could test it with their apps and all of that. The regular good stuff usually don't start showing up till the uh, beta is open, and that would be, would be sometime in April. However, we do want to mention here in passing, I think the one that I like is the fact that you could set your clipboard to time out after certain minutes or whatever, because some apps kind of try to sniff your keyboard or your clipboard to find out what's going on there. And Google is getting on top of that. And so there's a lot of the privacy thing implemented in here. Then, you know, the guest mode is kind of better. You could install apps for the guests. You can install the apps that the guests could use and things like that. So I like that idea. And then I think another one is also the visual thing. Basically, this has to do with, uh, you know, folks who can see now, you know, the material you, Google is trying to push it to where every app could use that, or, you know, take a part into uh, making their apps look, uh, have that material you going on. And the last one, I don't remember what it is, but we'll see what happens next month if they introduce something new and especially in April when the first beta opens up. Other than that, uh, another thing, though, that I want to say is that this is the strangest um, uh, preview I ever saw because usually they come with their own new talkback or Android accessibility suite. This one didn't. It's still at uh, talkback 12.1. Yeah, I was going to mention that as well. 
We also had a couple of announcements from Samsung this week. Warren, they announced something about software updates, didn't they? They did. And frankly, I think Samsung simply put Google to shame. If Samsung's giving us four years of OS updates and Google, you are the Android gatekeeper and you're giving us a miserable three-year OS update, come on, man, that's no bueno. Uh, so I really like what Samsung is doing, and it makes me like, hey, maybe it's time to give Samsung another wink, you know? <laughs> so you agree with me then that Pixel are just the Fisher Price of the phone? No, 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 no. Well, when it comes to the Pixel 6, this is no Fisher Price. <laughs> A product, <laughs> but do you agree that all the other ones were? Well, when it comes to the software thing, though, um, giving us three years, I may tend to agree with you, but maybe not using the word Fisher because Fisher is no bueno, you know. But seriously, I think. Samsung Samsung is really doing a great job here by doing that. And to add to that, even the watch now also has four years of OS update. Another reason why someone may get a Samsung watch. And as well as four years of software updates, they even said that selected devices would get five years of security updates. Uh, yeah, all of, yeah all of all of those yeah. uh, flagship ones yeah and that even goes back to the s21 just imagine that they retroed so that we're having even the s21 from last year joining the party that's commendable on samsung's part it's pretty good i just wish they'd keep the five year security updates at monthly rather than uh planing them off onto quarterly after a little while but it's still very very good and they also released some phones. Did you did you catch up with these? So here's what happened. I tried to add one to my card. They had the same thing that happened to Google. Um, and because I'm not into that Samsung that much, after it says uh, something went wrong, I just said, nah, forget that. I'm not going to do it. So I didn't get one. I was going to get one to simply just unbox it for our podcast and send baby back home to mama or whatever happens thereafter. But I couldn't get one, so I didn't I didn't do it. I was going to get the Ultra. That's what I was going for. Yeah, it, it seemed to me that the S22 and the S22 Plus are kind of steady as she goes. There's nothing above, above 256 gig with those two. There's a slightly better... Exynos or Xenos or Qualcomm processor, depending on which part of the world you live in. I do wish they wouldn't do that. The Ultra seemed kind of interesting, though, if very, very expensive for two reasons for me. One is that there's a stylus, which will, or the S Pen or whatever they call it, which will actually fit in the phone, which seems kind of neat if you like your S Pens. But the other thing as well is that the Ultra has storage capacity of up to a terabyte. Uh, so that's quite, that's quite interesting. <laughs> I guess the one thing I'll throw there is, what do you think? Is the is the Ultra now going to be what the old Note series was? Uh, so everyone thinks. They think it's kind of merged. Apparently it looks like the Note, feels like the Note, smells like the Note. Uh, and there wasn't a Note last year, so everyone seems to be saying the Note's dead. But yeah, because we'll after seeing this come out with Yes Pen and all the software that it has... I like I can't see what they could do with the Note line that they now haven't done with the S series. Yeah, and we haven't had a Note for a bit, so yeah, the, the, smart, the smart money seems to be on the Note being dead. Especially now, too. You look at the last Note that came out was kind of mediocre. Yeah. Like it really, the S series pummeled it in pretty much every way imaginable. Well, though, I think that what is nice about this one, too, though, is the fact that uh, Samsung used the same <clears> material, <throat> whether it's the Ultra or the startup uh, version, like the regular S22, because in prior versions, those would be like, you know, um, maybe either polycarbonate or something else. But, you know, both of these are the same material and both have both the uh, uh, Victus Glass Plus on both the front and the back. You know, unlike Google, where you have that only on the 6 Pro, while the uh, 
the regular Pixel 6 only has it in the front and not the back. So Samsung actually is doing something uh, different this year. But like you guys have correctly pointed out, I think that folks who like the regular Ultra version are maybe a little bit disappointed because this one catered toward more uh, the Note fans. Well, I kind of think what's happening is we see the Note series has kind of merged into 22 Ultra. So I'm honestly starting to think that um, we're going to see some advancements in um, internalizing the S Pen in the Z Fold for the next variant. I'm kind of wondering if the Z Fold is not going to become what the Note series used to be. Yeah. It, just, it seems to make a lot more sense to basically kill off the Note and put focus on the Z series. I think what you are saying, Cam, makes sense because... If I were a Samsung, I'll put that S Pen or whatever the stylus on the fold as to the Ultra because you want to, you know, kind of meet a balance here, you know, please both sides in the sense that uh, you provide something for people who are looking for the note, let them get the fold, and someone who likes a straight up Ultra without any of that, give them that. But no. I guess we're well, not part of the decision. I, I think the S Pen has a place on both screen, both devices. Because having a 6.8 inch screen, the, I, like I found previously having notes, the S Pen on the larger screens does actually have a really good purpose. So I think having it offered on both platforms is really great. I think the S Pen should have more features when used with a uh, Fold series over and above the, the S22 Ultra. Just kind of the same way that the S Pen basically had all these special features built into the Note series. You basically get a stock basic variant when you buy the Ultra, and you get almost like a plus version when you buy the Fold. Because to me, that would just make sense. Can I ask what the advantage of the pen is compared to just using your fingers? Because I've never used one and probably some other people listening to this haven't either. So I'm really curious oh. to know why, why would you want the pen? What I can do? honestly say as someone who has kind of some low vision use, I found it useful for doing stuff like markups. So if say I get a document sent to me, I can zoom it in, I can circle a word with the S Pen with a little bit more accuracy than I could with my finger. But for a use case for, say, a to someone who's totally blind, I honestly don't know that there is a use case for the S Pen other than potentially having mobility impairments. Because a lot of the features that we see with the S Pen are highly graphical and highly visual. Now... I know some people are going to disagree with me on that, and that's great. I'd actually like to hear what some use cases are for people who are totally blind. But based off my experiences, it's more useful for people who are low vision, two-sided, than it is for anybody else. Presumably you can handwrite with it, can you? You can, yes. and it's actually really accurate. Like, when I used it on my Note 9, I actually did most of my texting with the S Pen, uh, with the Google or Samsung handwriting mode. It was so, absolutely amazing. For whatever reason, VoiceOver had a handwriting feature on the iPhone. So I guess oh, that confused me so that. much. <laughs> you could use the S Pen <laughs> if you were a total who enjoys handwriting. I'm not one of those. We do have so. handwriting uh, on Gboard if you want, and it works, you know, using your finger. I, I, I use it now. It's and so then. clunky. Yeah, I, I do think uh, it, it would be easier to use a pen for that. I mean... I don't think I'd pay extra money for one, but I think if I got a phone <laughs> for other reasons and it came with one, I'd definitely play with that and with the handwriting and see, you know, was my handwriting good enough that Google knew it? <laughs> the answer will yeah. probably be not really, but it'd be interesting to have a play. And that Ultra as well, if Warren wasn't so cheap, he'd love it. It's a big phone. 
It's is a it? big, big phone by all accounts. So is it oh, big? How big is it? Not, it's not that much bigger than. Is it almost like a six tablet? Four, six point eight, uh, and then you have the regular one, six point one, and the middle uh, girl is at uh, six point six. So, and the Pixel yeah, Pro yeah. is uh, what six point seven or six point eight? It's just yeah. not too much of a difference, really. So, but I was looking forward to it. I wanted to uh, unbox it for the podcast, but uh, I wasn't that yeah. desperate. <laughs> now, what I really want to know, me. I, what yeah. I really want to know, because I always want to know this, is do any of them have memory card slots? And I'm guessing I no, probably know no, what the no. answer already. Oh, no. No, that no, makes no, me sad. I'm, I'm sorry, folks. I don't know why people keep doing this on the email list. Samsung is not bringing back the memory card or the headphone socket on its flagships. It went. It's gone. It's not coming back, folks. Sorry. I want them to bring it back now just to prove you wrong. For anyone who's like super techie, though, I have noticed on my S20 FE, we have access to use network storage. Yeah. So if you're techie enough, create your own FTP servers or your own online servers and use a network storage system. But it's not the same I, thing as a... the SD card. As I always say, Samsung's a bad dancer. You know, next moment they're doing a two-step, and the next one they're doing a, uh, you know, a hippie dance. Come on, man. Make up your mind. It's not coming back. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of glad it's gone. Like, I, yeah. I'm probably one of the few who is, like, super pumped that they're not bringing it back because I just don't have <laughs> a use work. case for it. Yeah, but you don't have to have one. Just to touch one final thing, uh, release dates. It kind of varies from uh, week after next to throughout March. Well, sorry, th- through to about mid-March. Uh, that depends both what phone it is and where you are. The Ultra seems to be coming out first, which is interesting, uh, certainly here. But sort of by, I don't know, 20th of March, if you're in the UK, Canada, US, or Australia, you should have all these phones. 